what's going on on the internet is what's called an astroturf campaign. What this is is a term for fake grassroots. This was spawned originally by the cigarette companies in the late 90s when the government took them to court and these guys were running around going, nicotine's not addictive, are you crazy? I don't know what you're talking about. And they had all these smokers' rights group that popped up out of nowhere. People think, oh, look at all these smokers asking for their rights. No, the tobacco <laughs> companies created these groups. And so, and I'm honestly in a weird way kind of flattered that my Brzezinski movie was so famous that it became this viral hit that they had to call out the big dogs. So they... Control these astroturf groups. They call themselves things like the Skeptics for the Protection of Cancer Patients and all these ridiculous names. These are like four guys, kind of like I'm sure you heard of like the whole election, like the Twitter farms coming out of Russia. You ever heard about all this? It's the same idea. You have a group of guys that understand this, understand how to create up multiple Twitter accounts, multiple Facebook pages, blogs. And they make it seem like there's this big movement, like all this activists. It's complete nonsense. It's like three guys that are paid quite well by the industry. As they're like top dogs. They just what they do for a living. These same guys were hired by Pepsi Cola. These are the same guys that went after the Vax documentary. Same guys. These are the same guys that uh, support Monsanto at every turn. If anybody goes after Monsanto, they, these guys come in and they confuse everybody. They hijacked all of the Wikipedia pages. They took three Brzezinski Wikipedia pages, Stanislaw's page, personal page, his clinic page, and his company page, merged them into one, and they control it. They own it. You try to change it, forget it. I, I'm a f deathly afraid of having my own Wikipedia page. I don't know what they do to me. I'm so happy. I'm, I'm, I'm saying this now, and the live cast are probably busy right now watching me, and now I'm going to have a Wikipedia page up tomorrow. But, but I'm telling you, it's, it is, the stuff on the Internet is so hard, man, because you don't know what I know. You go to the Internet, you look up Brzezinski, you think this guy's like a murdering lunatic. And the thing is, is that's what he has threatened. He is really a threat because it's a, whether or not you believe in it or whatever, or whether or not believe in the methodology, the reality is this is a pharmaceutical grade patented drug that has completed phase two clinical trials overseen by the FDA that one man owns. And if any, and here's one, the big kicker. You ready? I'm going to give me, give me one more two minutes. I was so close to this story um, with the whole Axelrod thing ties in. So he's in phase two studies. He cures what's called a DIPG, a diffuse, diffuse intrinsic pontine glioma. This is an extremely rare tumor that happens in children, and only 400 ch children in the United States get this tumor, maybe 40 in the UK. 90% of the kids that have ever been diagnosed with this in the history of humans are dead at two years. There's not a single walking survivor that I'm aware of. If you guys know one, please let you, okay. That is walking around today with a DIPG that has made it past five years, period. Except for where? Brzezinski's clinical trials. And there are not a huge amount, but there's not a lot of them. But about a 30% cure rate, roughly, depending on the trial. That's huge. These kids that were kids now have their own kids. But because of the incredible success with this one tumor type, this is where the rubber hits the road, guys. You ready? You think the David Axelrod story was heavy? Watch, listen to this. So here he is, forced, the FDA was essentially forced, no choice. Okay, we gotta give this guy permission for phase three randomized studies. We have no choice. So Brzezinski was faced with a couple of tasks. A, yeah, I need like $150 million to freaking pay for these things. Like he was saying, this, these things are not cheap. Uh, um, and secondly, because there's no standard of care other than radiation for a DIPG, there's no chemotherapy approved for it. Never been, never been cured. Why bother for only 400 kids a year? Who wants to spend the money on researching this? So he just had to like kind of go, okay, Two groups of kids with DIPG, they both get radiation, they're both going to end up with learning disabilities, the, you know, it's just, just going to fry the brain, it's right in the brain stem. They're, they're never going to be normal if they're cured. And they add antineoplastons to one group, what else can I do, Eric, you know, we had a long conversation, it's not that I am, just a journalist, but I have no choice. Every, and all of the supporters are like, you saying you can't give radiation? It's like, this is the FDA, guys, we have no choice. These, unfortunately, these kids are going to have to make the fall to save a lot more kids later, it just sucks. And, you know, what are you going to do? So he gets past that obstacle. Now it's time for the hospitals. You ready? Every single children's hospital in the United States of America and Canada and England, St. Jude's, Boston Children's, you name the children's hospital, you think of it, they said, nope, not on our property. We're not doing these trials. We had the money, we had the, phase, we had the data, we had the protocols ready, and no children's hospital in the United States would allow 
a phase three clinical study that only 400 kids a year in this country get, all of them die, to be performed on their property. So the FDA probably were like, oh, here you go, here's your permission, yeah, good luck finding a hospital. So you talk about, you know, you can talk about good and evil, you can talk about all this, but I'm telling you guys, just from where I'm sitting, in my personal opinion, this is big stuff. Yours is a systemic problem. You're gonna take down an industry. You think, oh, but it got, hey, Eric, it's only 400 kids. You ready? Here's the problem. You go through these studies and he cures a couple kids, say. You're gonna get it approved. You're gonna get it on the market. The problem lays here. This is what Axel Rob is getting at. This is what everybody, if you really spend enough time with this, is where it comes down to. You think, oh, it's just 400 kids a year. Once you approve anti-neoplastons for anything, even a lot, a rare brain tumor like brain stem glioma. Nowadays, if you or I or anybody in this audience get cancer and you say, hmm, I know about chemo and radiation, but I'm also aware of this anti-neoplastons thing. I've watched this documentary, this guy Eric did, and I, or my uncle's blah, blah, whatever. If you have the money, and even if Medicare and your insurance won't pay for it, you can insist off-label to get it. And if you want, if you have stage four pancreatic, I want, I want antineoplastons. I don't care if it's approved brain cancer tumors. I want it. I'm going to pay for it. I'm a millionaire. Who cares? So what I'm saying is, can you imagine what the industry would do if everybody lined up and had fundraisers and said, screw you, chemotherapy. I'm going for antineoplastons first, and I'll deal with you chemotherapy later if this fails. That's where we're at. And that's what Brzezinski threatens. So is it a magic bullet? No. But what I love about the story is, and I really respect everything you guys do, and there's a, everything to be respected. But just from a storyteller, Brzezinski is really an anomaly. I mean, I, I, the fact that he's still around is amazing. Mm -hmm. Pharmaceutical grade, true competitor to the industry. Everybody that's sitting up here also competes, but not like that. He's got the, he's got the ammunition to take him down at the, at the market level. And that's what they're afraid of. Mm -hmm. And the AstroTurf campaigners will come out, they will scare you, they will do everything. And in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if they had something to do with scaring the shit out of the hospitals. Because it's, think about it. And why would the hospital go out on a limb? Why would any of them, um, you know, to be destroyed by this industry, but for just being, doing the right thing? Let's do, okay, we'll do the clinical trials.